Welcome, church. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I'm going to step down and grab this mic. Can you kill this mic?
and that he was going to do it. Even when they got on the boat, and he's sleeping on the boat, and they, they're, they're, they're scared to death. These are grown men. These are fishermen. These are not just little men that don't know how, nothing about the water. They're on the water scared to death. Master, don't you care that we perish? What did he say? Did he, did he, was he freaked out? Was he scared? <laughs> Didn't he tell them that we were going to the other side? Right? Where's the faith? This is the kind of faith that we, we need to have if we, if we want to have the victory that God is calling us to have. We have to have the faith of Jesus. So I want to ask you again, does, does the time control us or do we control our time? You're in charge of your destiny. Yeah. B just said, nobody can take you out of God's hand. He said it in the prayer. Or he said it speaking. I don't know. It came out. Um, but you can. You can. It is very brave of you to speak of, of your struggles. You know? I mean, this this what this place is. is a hospital for sick people. And we're all sick. Okay? We all got problems. Every one of us, you know, mine is not yours. I have other problems. I, I get driving down the highway or, you know, down, I go up Route 1 all the time. I got more miles backing up than most people have going forward. But um, I, I just struggle with people in the left lane, you know. I mean, they just sit there in the left lane and they're going nowhere. And everything's plugged up and you can't move. And I, I just have the hardest time with that. And you know me, if it's here, it's coming out. I'm with Marty one day. Marty's bringing me back. We're, we're riding together. He's in the left lane, like 45 miles an hour. I said, Marty, what are you doing? <laughs> get over. Do something. I mean, move, follow, or get out of the way. Uh, that's my struggle. You know, I can't drive two cars. I shouldn't be, you know, concerned with what everybody else is doing. But I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter anymore. Young, old, and different, big, small, male, female, they're all doing it. Wrong. <laughs> I was taught that if you're in the right lane, left lane's for passing. You know? I don't know. That's one of my struggles. And I guess the Lord's going to use that to fix me somehow. I just haven't got it yet. I'm still beating my head against that same rock. How shall we free our minds? The same way Jesus did. Right? This isn't rocket science. It's not that difficult. Jesus' focus was what? How did he gain the victory? He said that we are to overcome the same way he overcame. And I want to ask you, how did he overcome it is written. It is written. Ooh. There's a big one. Yeah. It's all in here, isn't it? This is the road map. Right here is the road map. When you get to know the road map, you know where you're going, right? And eventually, you've been to a place so many times, you don't need the map anymore, right? Because it's in you. You follow me? It's in you. The Bible said Jesus is the Word, right? The way, the truth, and the life. You know, you may be tied to something, and you can't help it because it's, it's something that you have to do, whether it's taking care of people or whatever it is. But it doesn't have to consume your mind does not have to consume your mind. You know, I see people that have to take care of people, and I'll tell you what, that's something that I I, I wouldn't be so good at. I, my head is off to people that, that, nurses, you nurses out there that do that every day, I, there's no way I could do that. I mean, I'd do it for my wife if I had to. But um, that's about where it would be ending. 
Because it's just too much of a struggle. And, and God's made us all different, you know? We have different abilities, different personalities, different struggles. But no matter what it is, whatever your struggles are, we can get through it with Jesus if we're focused upon Him. You know, like I was getting to, that you, you see some nurses, they're in there and they're taking care of people, and they've been nurses for years and they're happy. And they love helping people. And you've got some that are even young and they're just miserable. And they don't like what they're doing. And they make the, the, the you know, the, the patient feel bad. What's the answer? Jesus. Jesus is the answer. We can, if we focus on anything or anybody else, our problems become bigger. Right? Bigger. Jesus is freedom. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, I just want to see a show of hands. Because I bet there's nobody here that will not raise their hand. Do you all, except for maybe some of the little ones because they weren't here. But do you all know where you were when the towers fell? I just want to see a show of hands. Okay. Most everybody. It's funny how things like that can uh, make an indelible mark in your mind. You know, I, I tell women that the reason women remember so well is because everything that they do is tied to emotion, right? Us men, we don't really care that much, so, you know, we don't, it doesn't matter. The next day is a new day, you know, you don't hang on to all these things. So, um, I got a young gal that works for me, and, and she says her boyfriend, you know, he doesn't remember things. I says, well, if you really want him to remember something, just slap him first before you tell him. <laughs> and that will spark an emotion. And he'll never forget it. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but it would work. He would never forget it. In a Christian way. In a Christian way. There you go. <laughs> liberty, brothers and sisters. Liberty has been disappearing all across this world. I don't know if you're paying attention to what's going on, but there's some really terrible things happening in this world. I have a friend up in Jersey, and he's been with the company for 23 years. This guy's a sharp tool. He's a very smart man. He has um, two grandchildren that have been hurt very badly by, you know, um, shots. I'm just going to say it that way. And he's refusing to take the shot. So his company is telling him, after 23 years, sayonara. This is America. You know, I, I don't care where you stand on taking a shot or don't taking a shot or whatever. That's, that's your business. Um, I hear from the top of the rooftops, it's my body and it's my choice, but all of a sudden now it's not. I, I really don't understand all that stuff. I thought, you know, being an American, you had the right to be wrong. Um, but freedom just disappears today. And uh, we, we, we just are all going to give up freedom for supposed security. Our forefathers knew that there's no security in giving up your freedom. Amen. Right? Amen. Um, how, do you, how do you think God feels about these kind of issues. You know, I, I, I have never seen more division in the church than, than the masks brought up, okay? This whole mask thing, it's just been terrible. And, and, and if you want to wear a mask, that's your business. Or if you don't want to wear a mask, that's your business, right? Um, but I've seen people just be thoroughly upset with other Christians because they have a mask or they don't have a mask. Really? I mean, what has Christ called us to? We're supposed to be something different than the rest of the world, right? 
I mean, the rest of the world can have this going on, but it shouldn't be in the church, right? I mean, uh, I don't believe there should be hatred and division over stupid things. People, if you're not paying attention, what's going on is people in government are teaching you how to think. Or not, not how to think. That's what schools should be teaching. But what they're teaching you is what to think. And when to think. It's absolutely craziness. And, 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 and people need to free their mind from this garbage. You need to pay attention to see what's really going on. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Nothing else is. Okay? People ought to be free to make their mistakes. If that's what they're going to do. You know? My wife, bless her heart, she's a wonderful woman. And uh, I'm going to sing her praise right here because I've made some mistakes. And that woman has sat back and she follows and she says, okay. She says, I don't want to go this way. This isn't the way to go, but let's go. And I screwed up. It was the wrong thing. And you know, she's so wonderful, she doesn't even say, I told you so. <laughs> she doesn't. She's a good woman. But, um, you know, we have this craziness of, and I don't know if I should say this, because boy, oh boy. Anyways, I don't want to start controversy between people and the way that thought patterns, but I may let out too much here of my own thought. But global, global warming is what they called it before, right? It's global warming. And then there's there's arguments for and against, right? So now they've turned it into uh, what do they call it now? Um, climate change. Climate change. Yes, yeah, climate change now. So this this is how we're going to usher in everything. Mm -hmm. You see, this is this is the vehicle mm -hmm. that gets us to where I, I can't say too much stuff here, but anyways, where they want us to be. I'm going to say they, okay? Without. The world powers and um, you know pretty soon it's not going to be masks it's going to be sabbath keepers you know sabbath keepers you guys are going to be the problem you're not going to be you know this this whole thing about the sunday is for the children right it's for the children and if you're not for it you're you don't love children. You don't care for people. You don't care for the planet. You know, I've, I've seen things on Facebook that people think that uh, if you're not vaccinated and you end up in a hospital for whatever reason, that you should just be thrown in the dumpster in the back because you're just like an animal. Because how dare you? Because you're not vaccinated. There should only be beds for vaccinated. I don't know what planet you live on, but that's atrocious to me. I've, I've had COVID, I just want to say, okay? It, it really was a blip. I had uh, a fever for, I think, a couple hours, and a dry cough for two hours, or not two hours, two, two weeks. But uh, that was it. And I never get sick. I get hurt all the time. Ask Ricky. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't get sick and, and I don't feel that anybody should make me because I want to be free put something in my body that I don't need I don't need but you know what I'm okay if you need it or want it that's your business it's not my decision that's your decision and the church, the hospital, the hospital church, and all that, I'm not even going to go there. Let's, let's turn our Bibles to Ecclesiastes channel. channel. <laughs> chapter 3. <laughs> chapter 3, yeah, propaganda. <laughs> channel 11. Um, whatever. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, let's begin in verse 1. I'm 
going to try to whip, whip, whip through things because, you know, there's not time. But anyways, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Okay? Wow. It says a time to be born and a time to die. And you know, Kyla has made a list. She started making a list of all the people that have passed in, what, 20 years in this church? She's almost to 30 people. Look around you. 30 people would make this church overflow right now. 30 people gone. And I don't know about you, but I, I mean, I've got a lot of friends lately, 55, 57 years old, just dying. And I'm sick of death. I hate death. A time to plant, a time to pluck off that which is planted. And here you go. 3-3, the Bible says, a time to kill. Do you hear that? The Bible says, a time to kill. And a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and yup, the Bible says it, a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. I hate the times of refraining from embracing. One of the best things in life is a, is a hug. I love hugs. And my wife's a great hugger. But now I'm teared up, can't even read. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. We've been lately trying to cast away a lot of things. Giving stuff away. I'm trying to whittle it out because as Americans we've gained too much stuff. We got way too much stuff. I don't know about you, but we do. A time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has set the world in their heart so that so men, wait a minute, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. This book, Ecclesiastes, was written by um, Solomon, which the Bible says is... Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that men should fear before him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requires that which is past. And moreover I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. And I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. And there is a time therefore for every purpose and every work. You believe that to be true? Amen. Amen. God is the judge, correct? So we should allow God to do the judging. Our Bible text this morning was Zechariah 4, 6, not by power nor by might, but by what? By whose spirit? The Holy Spirit. 
God's Spirit. Right. Holy Spirit. So we can fill our heads with stinking thinking. We can hate or not hate. Or we can choose life and love in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and allow ourselves to be led because we've made the right decision. The only decision that I believe that we have to make. And if somebody has something different and you can prove me wrong, then please do. Because until somebody does, this is where I stand. Um, John 14, 6 says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He makes no excuse. No excuse. Psalm 119.11, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not what? Sin against, Sin against thee. Let us turn real quickly. I'm going to wrap this up quick. On Leviticus 19. Let us begin in verse 16, Leviticus 19 and 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, for thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Who's your neighbor? The whole world, huh? All our brothers and sisters, you know? People we don't even know. People that anger us. People that are in the left lane when they don't belong there. <laughs> right? My brother and my sister. And I have to learn to look. You know, it's really easy to love somebody who loves you. But the true test of Christian character is loving the unlovable. Some people are just real hard to love. Yeah. Let us turn to John 13. <clears throat> John chapter 13. <clears throat> Is the other mic broken? The one that goes on the collar? No, I just didn't get it today. <laughs> you and I were both sleeping on John 13, and I want to begin in verse, uh, now let's begin in 34. 13 and 34, y'all there? I love to hear the pages turn. You don't get that with a phone. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. Why is he calling it a new commandment? Didn't we just hear that in Leviticus? Hmm. Let's think about that. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Ooh, wait a minute. There may be a clue there. That ye also love one another. Verse 35. But this, by this, shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. That word there for love is agape. Are you capable of agape? With Not without Christ. Amen. Jesus is God. The Bible says God is love. Right? So everything that he does, he does because he is love. <laughs> Even when he is judging and reprimanding, it is loving. 
because God is love. I mean, you may say that a man or a woman may have an attribute of love. They may be loving in an area or something. But God is love. And that's why he's saying here, I believe, unless somebody turns me around, that he's saying I have a new commandment. Why is he saying a new commandment? Because Jesus came.